Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and I'm here with my special guest, Nick Vale. Nick Vale, great to see you. Okay, Nick is also the producer of our live Manhattan TV show, No Free Will, or Free Will with a Question Mark, every Wednesday on MNN. Okay, and you know, he's written a couple books on this. You know, he comes to our meetups. I mean, we've been exploring, we've been leading the world to a new consciousness for three, four years now, okay? Um, the title of this show, this episode, this is episode number 181, Why Defending Free Will is Evil. Um, before we go into this, let's, as we usually do, just go briefly through what people mean when they say they have a free will. I love the topic of this show. Uh finally get our revenge on all these people okay uh <laughs> free will means you can make a decision in 100 percent independent of your nature and nurture okay another way of saying free will is like free will is the belief that we can choose what we do that what we do is fundamentally up to us that we actually have more control than would a puppet or a computer okay that makes sense and now we don't and we you know we've got a hundred and 80 episodes that'll explain why we don't. In this episode, we're not going to deal with that so much as explaining why the belief in free will is evil. Nick, start us off. Okay. Free will is evil because it connotes a belief moral... Belief in free will. Huh? Belief in free will is evil. What did I say? You said free will. Well, same thing. Belief in free will or free will is evil because it connotes a moral judgment and a moral superiority to those who can do good and... You know, uh, like, say, uh, ministers, pastors, Joel Osteen, Deepak Chopra, these guys that all preach free will are actually hurting mankind because it's making people who feel like they can't do things right or wrong, or can't, can't do things the right way, listen to them, are failures and deserve to rot in hell because they don't do things the way, you know, these ministers are telling you to do it. Excellent. Right. Another, another reason why free will belief is evil is that it indicts and it seek, seeks punishment for, and it at times punishes people that are completely innocent. And one way to understand this is like, let's say a crime was committed in the East Coast, okay? But you're blaming somebody who's living in the West Coast, who's been li living in the West Coast through an entire thing. Can you imagine how evil it would be to go after this person, you know, who, who was completely innocent? So that's, that's, as a way of analogy, when we accuse people of doing things wrong and when we call people evil and call them criminals and blame them and indict them and want them to suffer and stuff, we're, we're being as irrational, as immoral as, as blaming someone on the West Coast for something that was done on the East Coast. It's completely illogical, completely wrong, immoral. Now, when you go to church or synagogue or a mosque or listening to the New Age guys, Deepak Chopra, you know, and other kinds of spiritual teachers, you're going there to actually feel better. But the, the free will belief puts a lot of pressure on you because if you don't do what they're going to do and believe what they're going to believe, they're going to be condemned to being like a, an evil... You know, uh, you can't use your free will to side with them or do the right thing. It's double punishment. Not only do you feel bad about yourself, you think you could have done otherwise. So they're they're actually doing the opposite for the to the world and what their 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 intent. Like a Joel Osteen, is, do you know who he is? The guy. Sure. He's to, he's trying to make the world a better place. But when you start talking about free will, that you have free will, it's it's evil because you're taking the, what I would call the moral the moral superior. You're feeling morally superior. And, and it's like a thrill ride for these people that, you know, oh, you did bad, you're evil, and I'm good because I used my free will and found Jesus or exactly. whatever. Or I, so I, I don't like it at all. I mean, it's terrible. Excellent. Perfect. So, like, there are it's a lot It's causing of, much more pain than, heal, yeah, than healing. Yeah, and you know? there's a lot of people who do a lot of things in the world that they think they're doing the right thing, but they're doing evil. I mean, we understand this. For example, like the well, terrorists... Well, they're not doing anything. It's faded evil. But no, okay. I know. We're going to yeah. get into that. Yeah. The, the terrorists, you know, they go out and kill people, and I'm doing this for God, you know, I'm doing this, you know, like, to protect, defend, whatever. They think they're doing the right thing, but in, in, in actuality, they're doing evil. These, these priests, ministers, rabbis, rabbis, clerics, who are causing people to, to feel bad about themselves, to, to cause people to believe that they are condemned by original sin, that they're sinners, that they're bad people, you know, like, 
they think they're doing something right, but the, the reason they're doing something so wrong is like, if you know anything about psychology, you know that like what people tell you about yourself is what you believe about yourself, whether it's your parents or society, and what you believe about yourself is what's going to, in large part, determine what you end up doing. So if, if the, these clerics, these ministers and priests and rabbis are telling you that you're an evil person, that you're, that you're bad, that you sin of your free will, they're, they're, they're basically is eroding your self-worth. They, they, they're, they're, they're eroding, I wish I could, they, they're eroding your self-worth. You know, they think they're doing something good, but they're actually harming you. They're causing you to feel bad about yourself, which is causing you to, to do more wrong. So when you go to a sermon, you know, they usually just assume there's free will and it's never uh, called out on by the people to say, you know, that's very hurtful. It's just thrown in there, usually at the last second or very casually, like, of course you have free will, you know, it's just thrown in there and it's never called out on because it's actually the umbrella consciousness of the whole thing. So if it's the religious network or the educational or mental health or justice or whatever it is, educational, I don't know, name some other systems, legal system. It's the umbrella that's the assumption that's killing us. Exactly. And, the so, and it's this. never mentioned. It's like the biggest elephant in the room. All right. Do you know yeah. what elephant in the room? It's a big thing that's there that no one's even discussing. All right. And now, all right, let's... let's so it's assumed. Yeah, and let's absolve them. Let's demonstrate to them our understanding of what reality is really like by saying, listen, we don't really blame them. You know, they're doing evil. They're doing things that are really harmful. They don't understand how harmful they are. But we can't blame them because we understand they don't have a free will. All right, so this isn't about like just like, you know, getting people to, to dislike these people. These, this is about just basically, you know, exploring the truth that these people are presenting and all, or the, actually the, the lies, whatever. And so the, we might ask ourselves, why did they come up with this lie of free will? Why did they come up with this, this fiction of free will? And this is another evil that, that the clerics do. Basically, they use the belief in free will to, to threaten people, to threaten, to extort people. In other words, like they say to the, to the masses of, of their congregation, listen, if you don't believe what we tell you, if you don't believe what's in this book, if you don't do what we tell you, when you die, because you have a free will, you're going to go to this place so horrible for the rest of eternity, burn in hellfire and all, you know, and so like... I can't, personally, I can't think of a more horrible belief than that belief in hell. And that belief in hell couldn't be something that is used to threaten people like it is without people first... Well, they don't really they say it that will. way. I mean, they don't directly threaten you. It's implied. God, what do you mean? Joel Osteen doesn't say you're going to rot in hell if you don't listen to what I'm saying. And I never heard Deepak Chopra talk. What he says is... Life has infinite possibilities, it's quantum consciousness, it's filled with all kinds of... Don't pigeonhole yourself into the passive mindset of determinism. Uh, you have to be open to, you know, the universe and anything is possible. You know, he'll say something like that. He'll never th really threaten you and say if you don't... Right. On the other hand, like you told me once, never... Uh, Somebody, somebody whose salary is determined on, on not get, on getting, or what is it that yeah. if, if their salary is determined on getting something, they can't not get it. Yeah, don't, don't expect somebody whose salary is determined on not understanding something to understand it. Right, so a pastor, minister, cleric, or a new age guy like Deepak Chopra, if they started saying there's no free will, they're going to lose all their string, string they're going to lose their, well, the pastors are going to be thrown out of the church and lose their job, and he'll start, stop selling books, so they can't get it. Right, and so, like, even though, like, we Because it's more, it sells more, sells more to say there's infinite, what sounds better, infinite possibilities or your life is deterministic. Right, and even though we've just explained their, quote, unquote, rationale for, for deceiving people, it's immoral. Yeah, the problem is they really think they're helping the world and they're hurting the world. That's what my problem yeah. is. Or, or if they're coming from self-interest, if they maybe really understand that we don't have a free will, but in order to keep their job and, you know, like to keep the money coming in, they're lying to people, that's wrong. That's just No, no, wrong. I think pastors, ministers, clerics, and you, they actually truly, but they, they're, not, okay. uh, they're not on the pulpit saying there's no, it's telling their wives at night there's no free will, but I'm going to bullshit everyone. No, 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 no. Oh, they right. actually believe there's free will. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. And again, no, I, I, I don't come <laughs> That's all right. And again, even like, you know, even if we were to believe that, we're going to absolve them anyhow because they don't have a free will. They're as innocent as you and I or, or anyone who understands that we don't have a free will. And that's, that's, the, that's the goodness of understanding. Free will is evil, which is the topic of the show. Is it no, makes belief in free will. Right. 
free will or the belief in free will <laughs> is making people, it's evil, I agree with you. It's evil. It's making people feel badly about themselves. I know. Tell, talk and about it's, it. It's, again, so Because like, yes. if you fail at something, you could not have not failed. And the free will believers make you say, well, you could have made a different choice. Yeah, the free will belief makes you feel guilty. When you feel guilty, you, you feel, all right, if I did something wrong, if I'm going to be a moral person, I better punish myself. So you have a lot of people feeling bad about themselves for the wrong that they did that wasn't up to them, punishing themselves, you know, becoming, you know, just like not feeling good. That, it, that, that is evil. Anything that, that robs people of their basic right to happiness is evil. Think about this logically. If you fail at something, okay, and you have free will, you could have not failed at it, so you feel even doubly worse. So what I'm saying is you can still be a failure and you can still be depressed and you can still be angry and you can still you know, have all these emotions, but without free will, you won't be depressed that you're depressed. You won't be angry that you're angry. You won't feel like a failure twice because you failed. You just, it, you're just chemicals and you're just depressed. There's no reason to be depressed that you're depressed because of free, because free will is going to make you depressed that you're depressed because you could have not been depressed. But without free will, you lose the second layer of the emotion of feeling that way about feeling that way instead of just feeling that way. Excellent. Did you follow that? Absolutely. Oh, now let's apply this. The unrehearsed this. show is really coming out. No, yeah. So let's apply this to relationships. You've got, you know, you've got a friend or a spouse or something and they just do something wrong. They're not, they're neglecting you, right? So, like, basically, you've got two problems if you believe in free will. The first problem is they're neglecting you. The second problem is that you're going to blame them for neglecting you. And if you blame them, you're going to become angry with them. You're going to become hostile. They're going to become defensive. You're going to fight. And you're not going to, when you're, like, all emotional and stuff, like, you're, you're not going to be rational. You're not going to think. And you're going to be in conflict with each other. Whereas, like, if you both understand that neither of you have free will, fine. The person's neglecting you. So you, you talk about it without blame, without criminations and recriminations and hostility and stuff and chances are you make much more progress on whatever it is that they're doing wrong than you would under the free will paradigm belief so when you talk to these people about you're neglecting me it's coming from a different consciousness yeah you're, you're both on the same side with the free will belief you're at each other on different sides conflicting with each other, so right? So you would say, why is the universe have, compelling you to neglect me? Exactly. You say it like that? Yeah. You're, you're, Instead you're, of, why are you... Yeah. You're sitting down, you're saying, you know, like, you know, you're neglecting me. The other person says, yeah, well, I didn't realize it, and that's, you know, I'm, I'm sorry about that, but, you know, why is the universe doing this to us? You know, it places them both on the same side against this universe. And, you know, that's not ideal, but it's better than them being at each other. Well, she could say, I'm, I'm focused on work right now, or the guy could say, I'm focused on, I'm in the office. You know, that's why I'm neglecting you, but it's really the universe is having me focus on work. You know, you, it's a different language. Exactly. So anyway, free will, you're saying, or the belief in free will is evil. Do you think that's too strong a word since the people who are, you know, uh, preaching free will are not, re it's not really up to them. All right. You could say the belief in free will is faded to it's, be evil. All right. I mean, all right. Yeah, that's a good point. So it, it is evil, but it's not really the evil of the people who believe in free will because they don't have a free will. So you can't, a person who doesn't have free will is neither good or evil. You know, we just, we're like puppets. We just do. So like, it's kind of like the universe being evil, the universe making these people do. On the other hand, the universe is making us do this show to com combat this nonsense. Making us do the, the greatest thing ever, leading the world to brand new human consciousness. Absolutely. Now let's, let's explore why this free will belief is quote unquote evil in a way that affects us all. Denial and climate change. Do you want me to start with this or you want to like explain why free will belief like is causing a lot of climate change? Denial. It's, your, it's your topic. I mean, I, all right. I, I'm not a whole, yeah. All right, let, let's, all right, so here's the thing. Pew Research, 2014, just, you know, last year, came up with a poll. They determined that 56 of people in America, 56% 50 of Americans, two factors. One, believe that climate change is not happening. Two, believe that human beings are not causing it, all right? So 56% of Americans are in denial of this, right? What's denial? Why are they denying this? They're denying this. Sometimes, like we were talking about before, if they, if they own a, an oil company, they're making a lot of money from oil and stuff, they don't want people to believe in free will because they'll make less money. So it's part of it is self-interest. But a, a su substantial part of this is that 
when people believe in free will and scientists are telling them, you know, you and all your friends and your family are endangering the future of the entire planet, you know, how are they going to feel? They're, they're, basically, what they're hearing the planets, the scientists say is like, you and your family and all your friends are really evil. You know, you're like destroying, you know, you, you could end up destroying billions of lives, destroying the entire ecosystem. And so like, now here, let's go, let's explore psychology. Why do, what is denial? Denial is when you unconsciously are indicted with something that you feel threatens who you believe you are, your self-image, your self-identity, so you can't believe it. In other words, like, so like, in order to protect people, people's self-identity, people's belief that they're good people, they are denying that climate change is happening and that we're, we're causing it. Now, what's the answer, Nick? Here's the thing. You got it, right? So like, to the extent that scientists Re, repackage their message and say to people, listen, we, yes, we are deeply threatening the planet. We are profoundly threatening the planet, but don't feel guilty because nobody has a free will. It's not really our fault. Okay, when people hear that message, then like, fine, they're going to be concerned. They're going to be concerned because there's a lot we have to do. But, but they're not going to blame themselves. They're going to understand that the scientists aren't blaming themselves. Them, they're going to understand that they're not really fundamentally r responsible. So from that perspective, that truthful perspective, the hope, the expectation is that like, if they're not being blamed, they don't have to resort to denial to overcome the guilt of being blamed or, you know, of, of blaming themselves for that. So like, without that denial, then maybe the, the, the expectation is that then, that then they can look at the evidence objectively, you know, and, and maybe like we can reduce that, that 56% of Americans to like maybe 10% of Americans who don't believe it or 5% or something. But that, and so like, you know, we've been talking about how like free will belief is evil on a personal level or religious, you know, with religious, um, you know, within the arena of religion. Now, you know, this is an example of how free will belief is evil in the sense that it's dangerous to the entirety of civilization. I, I think free will, it might be better to say the belief in free will is dangerous. I don't know, if, you know, because when the culture that we live in, most cultures believe in free will, it's creating a climate of danger because you think someone else could have done otherwise, like I keep saying, and you think you could have done otherwise, and when you fail at something, you feel like a failure. And when you do badly at something, you feel like a bad person. And it's just not very helpful to who we actually are as human beings to think, you know, we could have done otherwise when we couldn't have with the knowledge we had at the time and the consciousness we had at the time. We're not free to choose things that don't occur to us at the time. So to imply otherwise in retrospect and hindsight is completely incoherent to tell another person what you should have, should not have been doing or thought of. I mean, it's, you're not privy to their uh, thoughts and their genetics and how they were raised and all the things that went on in their head and their unconscious. So it's completely incoherent to tell someone what you should have done otherwise. Exactly. It's dangerous in that sense because it's causing hatred. I agree. So and, and, you're, and you're taking resp deep responsibility for something that's not yours. Yes. So, so free will belief is evil also because it's dangerous. Like as Nick was just explaining, it's dangerous because it pits people against each other. It causes people to falsely accuse and blame each other. Now let's go back to the world, okay? Now you've got this, like it causes this on a personal level. What happens when you have ma major groups of people believing in free will and then as a result, blaming and accusing and wanting mm -hmm. to, to, to uh, uh, attack other people. That's where, that's where terrorism comes from. That's where wars, a lot of wars come from, you know. Well, say 100 years from now, nobody, everyone gets it and there's no belief in free will. I'm not 100% sure there'll be no wars and no crime and no violence and no terrorism, but it can't be any worse than it is now. It will be probably less. There'll be more talking it out and saying what's the cause or what's the reason for that and how do we correct the cause and not deeply blame someone, but I, I think it'll be better. All right, that's And a good even point. if it's the same, let's just say we're wrong and it's gonna, right. the truth, li the planet living in the truth is much better. Absolutely, but let's, let's say, yeah, let's say, you know, we, we have to acknowledge that overcoming free will belief 
is not going to make everything perfect. You know, because, for example, like, let's say, you know, because of climate change or whatever, there are dwindling resources. Some countries might, you know, want to go to war or whatever, just aggress against other countries for these limited resources, right? But, but again, like, what we're saying is, like, it will make, it will make how countries address each other, how people address each other, how people address themselves you know, much more intelligent, much more compassionate, you know, much less hostile. So it's not going to solve everything. And as Nick was saying, it's not just about the benefits of understanding that free will is an evil belief. It's also about, it's also about trusting in the truth, trusting like this, as, as people, you know, we're taught to trust that, that honesty is the best, best policy. I wanted to say the name of the show is Exploring the Illusion of Free Will, right? Yes. So when you talk about the implications of a no free will society, I uh, want you to know publicly that I don't really think that's the point of this show. The point of the show is we're the first people in history to have a show saying there's no free will, we're exploring the illusion of free will. And you know there was the in industrial age, the stone age, the industrial revolution. Well, we're in the nonsensical free will age. So it's not really George and I's job to to get all the implications correct. We're newscasters. We're just announcing to the world there's no free will. It's an illusion. We've got our kids. Well, you don't have kids. My brother, you have generation after generation after us to figure out what these imp We got hundreds and thousands of years after our lifetimes. To, we're hearkening the news, hopefully on CNN, that there's no free will. It's too much to ask us to go into every nuance and idiosyncrasy and implication of what that would mean. We've got hundreds of generations after us to... to you know, but historians of a hundred thousand, you know, they're going to call us in the nonsensical free will age, just like we're, you know, the Stone Age and the Iron Age. We're in the free, not, so we don't really know how to delicately balance all the implications of this monumental discovery. But isn't it enough that we've discovered it for now? Absolutely. Why not. do we have, why is so much pressure on us to worry about, you know, all, how the, implications of terrorism and war. We, I don't know and I don't really care. I know we've gone over the economic system and the mental health system and the religious system and the legal system and the educational system, the political system. That's all great. But we, there's hundreds of generations coming. I know you think climate change is going to wipe us all out, but if it doesn't, there's plenty of time to figure this out. Uh, you, you make a very valid point. You know, Nick and I have basically... We are just... We've been leading the world to new consciousness. Things don't happen without a reason. This, this... This, this explosion of media coverage and books being published on free will over the last several years have been the result of Nick and I, through this television show, through our two, through our three or four books now, through our meetups since 2010, you know, basically getting the word out. Yeah, basically, just get the word out. And so, so we're, we can't we're, even get on a regular show. We're on Cult Cable Act. We just want to get the somebody to do. Uh, a debate show in public and then once the issue's out we've got we, it's not up to george and nick to, to figure out you know another thousand years of history let our kids and grandkids and whoever figure out what it means that there's no free will let's just get the word out yeah, and, and you're and, doing a great job by trying to figure out what I it means it, yeah. but good luck with that it gives, it gives me a headache no he's right he's i mean right. it's no, too much you got plenty you got no you know yeah We've done enough. Yes, yeah, we just we have, get the word we out. We've gotten the ball rolling. Nah. We, we, we're, we're, and we're 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 actually leading because that nobody else is doing like two TV shows about this, two weekly TV shows. Nobody else is lead is having meetups about this. Very few people have written books refuting free will. So we're doing this. But we're really in the exploratory stage. Explore. Yes. It's like we've discovered a new planet. We're exp where there's no free will. We're exploring it. That's why we're exploring the illusion. Our kids might have a show. It's like. The political implications of no, or the religious, you know, let them fix uh, the economic system of no free will. What other educational, mental health, you can, justice right. system. I'm gonna, that's too much for us. What, Don't you agree? I agree. But okay. one reason we do shows like today's is because, like, we understand that people oh. act a according to reward and punishment. In other words, and they like, can't get it because they can't get the implications. Exactly. Yeah. If people believe that their life is not going to be better by understanding the free will is an illusion, that's going to make it a bit more difficult for them to understand. So that's one of the reasons. But, but as Nick was saying, you know, we, you know, we've done our job. We, we've already started this. In other words, like, you, this is not turning back. You don't go that's from, right. like, the world doesn't go from understanding that free will is an illusion to, to accepting it. And that's just not going to happen. As a matter of fact, there's this guy, you probably are familiar with him. His name is John Gray. He's a psychologist. He wrote the very influential Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, 
um, series. You know, the guy's got like major followers. He's actually um, publishing a novel in May, something that Marionette, Marionette is in the title. I forget what the exact title is, but it's a novel that's going to be explaining to people why we don't have a fuel. So in other words, like we're doing the, the nonfiction. We're doing the science, the logic of why we don't have free will. This guy's going to put it into a narrative because people like stories. So in other words, like, you know, if, if, if a lot of people begin to really get that free will is a complete illusion and really begin to get that our world is going to be much, much better as a result of this over the next year, I think this, this upcoming novel is going to be a major part of this. We're at the very beginning of, a, of, a, of an age the Industrial Revolution, the Renaissance, whatever age, Dark Ages, Medieval Ages, this is the very first year or two, you know, historically it's going to look back at, you know, say in the year 2500, somewhere in the beginning of the 2000s, two guys did a show starting to figure out there's no free will, but there's so much time after us to figure out but I, what the implications are, but I see what you're saying, you think people can't get it because they can't get the implications. So I see what you're saying. But I like to think it's like a newscast and breaking news, no free will. Absolutely. You figure out what, you know, we're just trying to get the news out there. And it's the biggest thing yeah, ever. Yeah, biggest thing ever. I'm going to quote John Searle, American philosopher. He said that for our world to overcome the free will be belief would be, quote, a bigger revolution in our thinking than Einstein or Copernicus or Newton or Galileo or Darwin. It would alter our whole conception of our relation with the universe. And that's what's happening. That's what Nick and I are leading our world to. And this maybe in a few generations, there'll be think tanks and universities just to study what it means. You can't just have two guys announcing the world's biggest thing and have to figure everything out. It's going to take hundreds of years of specialized people, you know, discovering what it means to the economic and all the other systems. Right. And the other thing is, yeah. like, to the extent we understand that nothing is up to us, everything is up to God. So it really leads to a proper understanding of God. In other words, God is omnipotent. God is all powerful. Everything is, and you know, you can use the universe. I'm a pantheist. To me, the universe are, and God are synonymous. So because nothing is up to us, we can, because understanding that nothing is, is up to us can lead us to a much much more evolved and intelligent understanding of why the universe is the way it is and how the universe works. So if you're watching in Manhattan, we're live every other week. This is obviously not the live show. I wrote a book called The Bible, No Free Will. George wrote a great book called what? Free Will's Refutation and Societal Cost to... And Rolling Climate Change and All. All right. Uh, this is the biggest thing ever. Tell your friends. Don't expect us to figure everything out. Just no free will is all we know. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs>